So here I am with Eileen, who's with Global Sales at Astor and Kern. Hello everyone, this is Eileen Lee from Astor and Kern. Hi. Uh, I'm happy to be here in Japan and meet you guys. Hello. Yeah. And we're here with the new Khan Cube. And you can see it is a substantial increase in size uh, over the original Khan. It's also a lot more powerful, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so we have the outputs at the bottom of the, uh, at the top here of the 2.5 millimeter and the 3.5 millimeter, and then we also have the new XLR out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually, this Khan Cube is the second model of our Khan line, so uh, it is more uh, focused on output output functions. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Higher output power. Um, so you can use more headphones with it. Yeah. I used to have a Khan myself, so uh, I can see that definitely Astell and Kern has decided they want to double down and make something even more strong, even more powerful. So I'm sort of uh, excited to kind of have a play around with this. Thank you so much, Eileen. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. So this is the new Cube. It's sort of difficult to film because uh, it, it's hard to even get the whole unit into frame here. It is substantial. Um, you could conceivably use this one-handed, but it is very much a transportable sort of desk unit. Uh, the hardware buttons have been changed, so now it's, um, you know, sort of uh, software buttons with the display here, a much larger display. We're sticking with the USB-C. Um, we still got, well, now we've got an even more substantial volume knob, which is just uh, beautiful, the feel of it. Uh, we have this mini XLR, which will be uh, intriguing to see how this gets used in the future. And you have 3.5 and 2.5. So definitely, this is a, a this is a unit that I think um, I think it confuses a lot of people because they go, "Who's buying this?" But I can tell you personally, as someone who works at a headphone store, and I have to listen uh, and, and demo headphones all the time. I personally would love a portable unit that could drive every, you know, almost every headphone in the store. And in that sense, I think the. Uh, the Khan Cube is going to be one of the closest to be able to do that and it's still more portable than say something like the Sony DMP-Z1. So uh, I definitely think this is not going to be for everyone but there are some people who are really going to be into uh, the size and weight and power of this thing. So I made a stop at the Oriolus booth. Uh, because this is one of those brands that you can't find in Australia at the moment. Uh, and I wanted to have a listen to their new Percivali uh, hybrid IEM with multiple drivers including electrostatic tweeters. So listening to the Oriolus Percivali, it's actually one of the most unusual and uh, surprisingly good earphones uh, that I've heard so far at this fair. It has this really unusual separation between the, um, the upper mid vocals and the bass response. It's very fast. It's a hybrid with electrostatic tweeter drivers and then the mid range by balanced armature and the dynamic for the low range. Uh, it, is, it is very interesting. So obviously Panasonic being one of the largest uh, manufacturing brands for consumer electronics does have a presence here at the festival. I've always been intrigued about Panasonic headphones because you can't necessarily find them very easily in Australia but they do make some um, serious headphones so we're gonna have a listen. So this is the uh, Panasonic RPHD 610N. Uh, I have to say it's a wireless noise cancelling headphone uh, in terms of sound, I actually like this a lot more than I suppose the market leader, the uh, 1000XM3, because to me it's a much flatter sound, uh, it's much more sort of detailed. Uh, uh, this is a product that I haven't seen in Australia yet, so I'm wondering if we'll eventually see that uh, in Australian shores, but uh, it's, it's actually quite interesting to see that Panasonic, at least it appears in Japan, is very much uh, very strong in that kind of area of making headphones. It's not something that I necessarily would have expected until I got here to Japan. Now this is the uh, Technics 
EAH T700 uh, and Technics is probably a legendary brand for a lot of people out there. Um, this headphone sounds really interesting because it's relatively flat, and I mean flat in terms of having a, a relatively linear but still quite strong bass response all the way up to the highs. But then, uh, and this is really interesting, if you have a look inside, you have the normal dynamic driver here, and then you have an extra tweeter driver here, and you can totally hear that extra high frequency energy that's coming from the tweeter. Um, it's it's a, a sort of almost metallic sound. Uh, it, it's an almost an extra kind of metallic ring to it, but at the same time, I wouldn't say it's particularly harsh or aggressive. So it's one of the more unique uh, sounding headphones uh, that I've heard. Um, yeah, I'm sort of intrigued by this. So it's seven o'clock, it's the end of the day, it's almost the end of my throat and I only made it halfway through the fair so I guess I'm coming back tomorrow. Let me know um, what you think of what you've seen so far uh, and in the meantime, konbanwa, uh, have a good night.